Hey everyone, and welcome to episode 3 of Magic Towers Resort. So before we get started, I first want to thank you guys for all the feedback that I got on the first two episodes already. Um, I got a, a lot of likes, I got a lot of new views and a lot of responses from you guys with things that I can work on and a few pointers that I can improve on as well. So thank you guys so much for that and I'm really hoping to, uh, to be able to use those points of feedback in the future as well. But let's get to what we're actually building right now. So. As I said in the second episode, this roller coaster will be flying through buildings and things like that. And right now it's lacking that a little bit and we only have one building that actually goes through. Um, which is why I wanted to add this tower over here that you actually um, go through near the end of the ride. While I was building this building I didn't really want it to be just a single tower on its own again. Uh, so instead I decided to make it a little food court which happens to be under this piece of, uh, of track and I think it fits pretty nicely. It's just a simple food court. I'd imagine it to be um, selling some basic food items like a quick service type of uh, restaurant or maybe even smaller. So to hide this building I am adding some rock work against the sides. I might remove a little bit of that later um, but I think it, it frames the building a bit um, a bit more nicely instead of it just being a random building inside of this uh, pretty barren desert as it stands right now. Um, we will be expanding that this episode quite a lot um, and hopefully we, um, we can start to round off this area uh, by the next episode. So again the back side of course looks a little bit more ugly only the coaster is gonna really uh, pass through it very quickly so the guests won't notice that too too much so that's not something that i'm too worried about uh, because of course the coaster will be breaking some of the sight lines that you um that you get to see when you ride it um, but i think that's not too big of an issue some other parks also deal with this in their own way um usually they don't care too too much because when a guest is on a coaster they're not go really gonna notice too much of that anyways so speaking of which um, I am gonna change the layout of this coaster quite a bit. I figured it was a little bit too high and I want to lower it a bit, make it a little less fast as well. Um, so I'm really quickly redoing the layout here. Also the layout felt a bit too much like spaghetti, so I'm bringing a bit more structure to the layout in this episode. So just testing out the different speeds for the boosters over here for the LSM launch until I get that working again. So right now the block brakes aren't perfect yet. I still have to move that mid course brake run to make it run smoothly. Because as it stands right now, the coaster will have to wait on the mid course brake run every single time. And that's of course not what we want because it really um, it really breaks the flow of the coaster. And it also gives the, uh, gives the guest a uh, good hard look at all the roofs that are going on everywhere. And we don't really want that if we can prevent it. So um, yeah, definitely gonna have to make that a bit smoother. So here I'm extending the desert. I am basically taking the space of the coaster as the desert area. And um, on the sides uh, there will just be uh, some more rock work, uh, some trees and vegetation, and also some buildings to kind of hide whatever is behind it. So behind this area I mostly imagine there to be some uh, backstage area, because then in the next, um, in the next themed area we can use all that space for the backstage to put more of the backstage for the other area. So I think that works pretty nicely. Um, that way we need less access roads because we can basically supply two different areas from the same access roads. So speaking of which, um, really just to kind of hide things, I'm trying to strategically place all the, these rocks uh, everywhere. I'm trying to not overdo it so they are n not any higher than they have to be um, because I don't want rockworks around these coasters that are going like way 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 too high. I do kind of want to try and keep it realistic of course which is kind of the point of this park as well uh, but it is challenging with this area because I'm really relying on the rockwork uh, to uh, hide everything. So later on I do hope to move on to more plants instead of the rockwork to actually hide whatever is going on behind it because I would imagine that to be a lot cheaper. So I was actually looking at some concept art and one that I really liked is um, a view of a desert with in the back there's this um, Arabian city going on. So I figured why not actually try to create that. 
And while I was making that, I figured, hey, when we have a facade here for, you know, no reason apart from it looking nice, we might as well actually turn it into a, a simple building that has a function. So we'll see that in a second, I'll talk about that. So yeah, we have the entrance gate over there with a uh, protective wall that protects the city. And now I'm adding a roof because I figured if we can add some extra depth to this by, by adding some roof layers on it, it might actually look like a proper city of some kind. So that's what I'm doing here, that's why these random walls are there. So a little more about the function of this building. So I figured since we have a facade here anyways, might as well turn it into a building. And since I plan on having the backstage here, I figured why not actually turn it into a little office building. So I could imagine the operations of the park for this side of the park to be uh, to be done at this office building. It's pretty spacious. I think it's uh, it's a nice size for some basic operations. So the look of the building is pretty modern um, because it will be hidden from the guest and um, that way it will look cool and fresh to the employees working here as well. It is a pretty basic, um, pretty basic modern style. There's nothing fancy going on, which is not the purpose of the building anyways. Just adding a little wall there. Maybe there's an elevator there or something like that. Um, that's kind of what I imagined for it anyways. So what I was thinking is that we might be able to access this backstage area through a road that might go under the paths later. But before we get to that, um, I'm just gonna finish up this desert area a bit more. I'm really trying to uh, play around with the terrain textures, adding some vegetation. So even though it is a desert, um, vegetation really helps to uh, bring it to life, which is ironic since it's a desert and probably mostly dead. Come to think of it, I can probably add a bit more dead trees. I do have them in my scenery selection as well. And so far I haven't relied on them too too much. They do look a bit spooky though, which is not the kind of feeling that I want to go for anyways. So after you get launched, I want to, there to be another building that you go through on the other side. Um, basically in the middle of the launch. Um, the really nice thing about this placement here is that I figured I might as well let two uh, pieces of track go through the same building. That could be a cool interaction, even though the coasters will never actually cross here at the same time due to the block breaks. Again, as always, I'm just trying to uh, layer these walls uh, with some different textures. And for the Arabian type of style, you don't need too many layers to get something convincing to work, since these buildings tend to um, uh, don't really rely on too too much details and colors, um, but instead a bit of depth going on in the walls, and they tend to be uh, pretty subs uh, substantial decorations, if there are any. So as I said in the last episode, I wanted to fill this area up with rides that uh, would be interesting to all kinds of target audiences. So right now we have roller coasters for the Trail Seekers. Um, so we also need a flat ride. This flat ride is a bit more thrilling, um, but I think it works well for this type of area. It also gives a nice focal point uh, for people who enter the themed area and see this ride in the back. It just adds some extra movement. Besides the roller coaster, of course, moving around as well. Just lining that out with some water, just to bring some water into the area. But I'm using the water very sparsely because uh, of the desert area. Again though, I ran into the struggle of how to actually hide the backstage here. So I'm resorting to some, uh, let's do some rock work again. Though this time the rock works are a little bit lower. And I think this is gonna help with um, some forced perspective as well if you look into the area. Because the rock work in the back will be um, much smaller than the ones at the entrance. And I think that works pretty well. Uh, adding a little corner building there uh, just to kind of give the idea that there's more to this place than just the things that we are we are able to touch basically. I like to kind of rely on that trick um, because I feel like it can really bring an area to life. Just adding some shade for the visitors. I'm not sure where this theme park would actually be located if I would have to think about that. Um, but some extra shade is always nice if it's summer and especially now that the summers seem to get hotter and hotter every year. Uh, it might be nice to um, have some shade for the guests who are actually queuing up for that ride. 
So as always, just backing up that little desert wall there. Uh, the rock work, I mean. Um, there's a little things to fix here in the main hub. And now I figured that the entrance area was a bit barren compared to the rest of the area. So I'm just trying to add some little details and touches to it just to make it a little bit more uh, exciting. So the real thing that would have to draw you into this area is of course the coaster being there but also your curiosity because as you look at the entrance of the area there isn't much to see yet. You really have to walk in to discover and then the area really opens up and you get to see what is there. And I think I, I quite like that um, because it fits the mysteriousness of this theme as well. So I, I quite like that idea. Just to make the area a bit more interesting and adding some more vegetation. But now it might be time for the next thing. Um, so like I said, the ride really helps to draw people into the area and give something in the distance to look at. But I figured there could be something more grandiose, right? Um, some kind of weenie slash centerpiece at the end of this area that you can really look up to. So looking at some concept art, I saw some um, desert areas um, with these uh, canyon walls going up with buildings uh, built well on the walls of these canyon walls. And I drew some inspiration from that and tried to kind of aim for the same kind of effect. Um, these buildings in the concept art were round. So of course I'm using tracky texture here to get that same kind of roundness. And I think it helps because the rest of the area has so far been rather square and on the grid. Um, so I think a nice little round building here is really going to help to make the area come to life even more. So these buildings aren't anything special, they're pretty basic. Um, just really making sure that the... Um, the order in which the tail elements are on each tail is correctly set so they don't glitch out too much. So far the park has been um, has been pretty okay with uh, in terms of the glitchiness going on. Um, I try to keep that into account. Usually you can fix the flickering of tail elements by just um, switching up the order that the tail elements are in. You can do that with the tail inspector. Uh, you probably know what, I, uh, what I'm talking about, but you can try that if you're having trouble with that. So again on the other side I also need a little building. Um, just to continue the building on the other side. Playing around with some different roof textures and things like that. So next up it was important to kind of build up to this higher uh, point in the area. Because this, this rock work is pretty uh, pretty high. Uh, which is also why I like to keep it in one place um, because that way in terms of the support uh, we can really save uh, a lot of materials and um, in the end realistically speaking on the cost as well. So that's also why I didn't want this, um, this high of mountains anywhere else in the area just so we would be able to focus that on, on more of a single point in the area. So here I figured that after this little outcrop over here and this outcrop actually gives a little, a pretty good view of the area, um, especially the coaster itself. As you're walking on the paths, the coaster is a little bit hidden every now and then. I might open it up a bit more later, because I'm not sure if I like that yet. But really at the end of this street, you get the full view of the coaster, and you can basically see the entire coaster. So adding a little um, corner building there, just again to give the idea that there's more to it. And also really to hide the supports that are there for the rock work. So right now I'm keeping the uh, backstage areas pretty simple. Um, but we can always come back to them later as we finish off more areas. So I do want to, uh, to give them a proper function as well. Not as in gameplay, because of course there isn't much gameplay regarding backstage areas in Relacos Tycoon. Um, but we can always make... Um, Think of reasons why buildings are there uh, and give it a, uh, a, a fantasy reason for them being there. So with the little viewing area there, I figured that it would actually be a great place for a restaurant as well. Um, being able to sit down somewhere and have that view seemed like a really cool place to be at. So uh, that also gives me a reason to curve the path back towards the park again because we are getting way too far from the center of the park here so I really had to find a way to return and this restaurant plays in really nicely with that so we can build a little terrace here that gives a great view of the rest of the park 
and the building as well um, will be slightly diagonal on the front um, or more curved I'd say and that also helps to bring the path back and give a reason to bring it back as well. We'll see that happen in a little bit. Um, Again, just using some uh, trick texture to get, uh, get these shapes that I would not be able to get with just the wall elements. Um, this specific round bit will be a roof. Um, but even though it's just a roof that's curved, uh, it really helps to, uh, to give the feeling that this building is a lot more organic than some of the other buildings would be. And I think that's very important as well because this building is pretty large compared to the other buildings that I've built so far. And that's really because this building has a proper function. It's a restaurant. It's probably going to be a pretty big restaurant because um, this is going to be this area's main restaurant, basically. So it could be pretty busy. So it has to be pretty, pretty large. But making things larger also means that you have to think a bit more about how it is built um, and the shape of it overall. Because. Um, Smaller buildings, it's fine if they're a little bit less interesting in terms of the shape. As you get bigger, uh, bigger of a building, it becomes harder to actually give it a nice shape as well. So just building a simple roof on top of it. I don't really mind uh, people being able to uh, to see the, the gray <laughs> rooftop there. Um, they're gonna see more of that in the rest of the park anyways. So a little sunshade cover over there, just to kind of top it off and give it more depth um, and to make it more interesting. And here you can really see that curved front that I was talking about, which is the, uh, the entrance of the restaurant. I think it looks uh, looks pretty uh, pretty nice, it fits well into the area. And it gives me a reason to bring back the puffs, like I said. Of course, as always, we need some backstage access to this restaurant, just to drop off some supplies and maybe... Um, uh, so I could maybe imagine a storage, uh, the storage being beneath the restaurant and Rex being able to drive up there and drop off their supplies. So right now as it stands this uh, area, this uh, little backstage area is most likely going to be um, being too close, uh, to be, uh, going to be closed in in the end. So a way to solve that I think is going to be uh, that in the next episode we'll be able to um, build an access road that tunnels under the path and that way trucks and cars will be able to drive through the theme park without the guests actually seeing them and since I'm transitioning here uh, more to um, I want to rely more on vegetation instead of rock work over here um, so I'm slowly degrading the amount of rock work and allowing me to put down more vegetation and that in turn also really allows me to hide the fact that there will be a road right a uh, driving right under the paths here but before we completely stop with the rock work I felt that it was important to add a building here because otherwise the, the end of the rock work will be a bit too abrupt so the building really helps to just fill in that last little bit that you would see um, when you get the full view and after that I can get rid of the rock work because then the entire area is closed in and then we're good to go and it won't look too, um, too unreasonable there suddenly being a lot of vegetation in this desert anyways that's about it for episode 3 thank you guys so much for watching make sure to leave a like if you like this video and share it with your friends if you want anyways Thank you for watching again and see ya in the next one. Bye bye.